Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to be doing a full setup guide for Duck Station Standalone on Android so that we can play our favorite PlayStation 1 games. Now, there's a few reasons why you would want to use Duck Station Standalone as opposed to the RetroArch Swan Station Core, for example, which hasn't been updated in a very long time. And there's a few updates and things missing from it that Duck Station Standalone has. For example, you might notice on Android that it is hard to upscale Final Fantasy games with Swan Station, and that's due to slowdown. But Duck Station Standalone has no issues at all handling it from a performance perspective. This is device dependent, so I'll be using my Ambernic RG406H for this demonstration here, and that has a T820 processor inside of it. So here is Final Fantasy IX, the start, very first battle that you get into, and you can see that there is no drops or issues at all with Duck Station Standalone at 5x 1080p resolution. But with Swan Station on RetroArch, we have heavy drops. It is very, very apparent. You can see it right away. Everything drops and it's going super slow. And this is extremely bad. And the only thing we did here was upscale it to 1080p. Now I have personally experienced this playing Final Fantasy 7 and 8 in some spots over the years using RetroArch Swan Station on pretty much any device that isn't the Odin 2 portal. So yeah, basically if you are chasing upscaling and best performance with continual updates, then Duck Station Standalone is what you want, and that's today's video. So, right off the bat, you are of course going to need PlayStation 1 games, if you plan on following this guide. And I would suggest just simply creating a ROMs folder on your internal storage or your SD card, then a PSX folder inside of it, and that's where you're going to put all of your PS1 games. Now, as far as finding the games yourself, the ROMs GitHub is a great resource that should help you, and I would highly suggest the CHD formatted ROMs, or if you want a big set of them, archive.org has the CHD PSX USA set, and you could use something like JDownloader to grab them on a PC. But if you don't have a PC and you just want to use your Android device, then the ROMs GitHub is a good option. Now make sure you're logged in to archive.org or you're going to see locks if you're going that route. For BIOS, which you are absolutely going to need, the PSX on PSP660.bin BIOS file is what you want. A simple Google of that file name and you find a GitHub where you can download it nice and easy by just clicking the download raw file option on the right. Lots of games will not load unless you have a BIOS file, and this is the best one. So I'll show you how to install it in a little bit. Do not skip this step, you do need this. Now for those of you wondering why I'm saying to get chd files instead of bin slash q, chd is one single file, it is lossless, and so organization is so much easier with chd. You don't have a million different files clogging things up. I'll also leave a guide in the description to setting up M3U playlists for your multi-disc games in case you want to clean things up a little bit further, because that can be a bit annoying. But that's a bit optional, you don't need to do that for today. Alright, so let's go ahead and install Duck Station Standalone, and you have two options here. There is the Google Play Store version and the website version. Both are exactly the same, so most people are going to opt for the Play Store version, since it's easier updates and all of that sort of thing. But if you want to use the website, you can do that as well, especially for something like Obtainium, if you're going to use that. And that's a bit more advanced than we're going to talk about today. Once you've installed it, go ahead and open it. Just click Next. On this screen, you can adjust some settings now if you want, or we can do it after, which we're going to do it after, so click Next. It's now asking for you to import your BIOS files. And remember, we downloaded that BIOS file before. So just navigate to that file, the bin file, select it, and it'll import it for you. Next up, we have to tell DuckStation where our PS1 games are. So head to your internal storage or your SD card, wherever you created the ROMs folder, head into the PSX folder and select it. Go ahead and click next. Feel free to skip this part next and then click finish. It is now going to import all of your games, so it might take some time. 
First things first, let's change some settings. Click the three lines top left and head to App Settings. You can now see some of the settings that we ignored before. They are all in these tabs in the menu. We likely want to see our frame rate for a little bit, so we can turn this on. If you want to increase the size of the frame rate information, you can do that via OSD scale as well, because sometimes it is a bit hard to read that frame rate information on the side, depending on your device's resolution. Now in system, if you like that cool PS1 boot animation and sound, disable fast boot to get that all the time. Scroll down to speed control, and if you have a powerful device, you might want to limit the fast forward speed because unlimited might be a little bit too quick for you. You can always come back here later if you find that it's a little too fast. Lastly, you can enable rewind if you want, but personally, I never do. Head over to graphics, and this is the fun stuff. You can change the renderer if you want. I typically leave it on automatic. Some people swear by Vulkan, but I figure I'll just let DuckStation figure it out. Now, if you have a powerful device, we can upscale the resolution here. So I'm going to set it to 1080p because I'm using an Odin 2 portal and it can do that easily. There is an option here for widescreen rendering. Personally, I would never, but some of you may want widescreen. Let's head over to post-processing and there is a lot of shader lovers out there and this is where you can add your shaders. There are built-in ones here that you can enable, but I don't like shaders so I'm not going to do this. The Achievements tab is where you can sign in with your Retro Achievements login and your information, and if you have it and want to do so, you can do it now. I do, so I'm going to set mine up. Game List is where your games are currently located, which we selected during setup. Now, if you ever move your ROM folder or your PSX folder anywhere else, maybe to another SD card or somewhere else, you can just come back here and update the location and you should be good to go. If you ever want to import a memory card, you can do so on the memory cards tab, but otherwise there is no real reason to touch anything here. That is it for app settings, so let's head back. Next, let's go into controller settings. Head over to touchscreen, and if you are using a controller or a handheld, set touchscreen controller view to none to remove those on-screen touch controls that nobody wants. If you scroll all the way down, you're going to see enable game vibration. And if you want rumble, turn this on. This might not work for every controller or device, so just be aware. Head over to port 1 and we can now configure our handheld or controller. Scroll to bindings and then start to map your controller by selecting each button and then pushing the button on your controller or handheld that you want it to match. You can stop after you map right stick up. Head over to hotkeys, and I like to map fast forward toggle to L3 plus R2. Quick load, I like L3 plus L1. And quick save, I like L3 plus R1. Toggle on screen display to show and hide frame rate information, I can put as L3 plus A. Lastly, we have the open pause menu. Now, normally you don't need to map this as many handhelds or controllers have a back button to open the menu but feel free to map it if you don't. Maybe L3 plus X would work. Head back, and now I want to talk about transfer data. Transfer data is an easy way for you to back up all of your data from DuckStation and then import it into DuckStation on another device or even the same device if you're maybe doing a factory reset. It is super useful and not a lot of people know about it, but keep this in mind if you ever want to set up a new device and keep your saves and everything. Otherwise, let's go ahead and boot up a game just by clicking on it. You're going to see that we have the frame rate information showing on the top right, and we enabled that before. And I can hide it easily by pushing the hotkey that I set up before. Now, you can always turn off the frame rate information in the menu from before. Just use the hotkey to turn it off and on if you want. Now, if you have a back button on your device, push it to get to the in-game menu. Or you can swipe up from the bottom and hit the back arrow, or sometimes you can swipe in from the left. Otherwise, just give the pause menu a hotkey like we talked about before to get to this menu. There's a few things that you can do here. Change disk is important to know, for when you're done a disk, you have to select the next disk and off you go. Now if we select patch codes, this is cheats. You have to select enable cheats and then scroll down and choose whatever cheat you want to enable. 
Lots of games will have cheats already included by default because DuckStation has that already. But let's talk about the top right buttons. If you click the I button, this means any changes that you make here will only apply to this specific game. So if we head to graphics, maybe this game we want to run at a lower resolution because it's not running that well. Or it, you need a different GPU renderer because again, it's not running that well. So you can set that here and it'll only apply to this game. Now, alternatively, if you hit the settings cog top right, any changes that you make here will apply globally to all games. So you can easily make changes for all games right inside of a game. Head to the controller icon and you're gonna see an option here called per game configuration. If you turn that on, now any changes that you make here for the controller will only apply to this specific game. You can even save a profile and then load it for another game if you want. If you turn off per game configuration, any changes you make will apply to all games. To exit a game, just choose exit game from the in-game menu, or you can map a hotkey for it. Otherwise, that's really all there is to DuckStation in setting it up, configuring it, and getting ready to play some games. We went over everything and anything that I could personally think of that you should be able to do in DuckStation. And now you can go back using today's guide and the different timestamps to go back on different things. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro handhelds and retro gaming. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.